What is up everybody? It is your boy Triple G93 here giving you a very interesting game. So I'm going to throw this back. I don't know how long this has happened. But there was this one game that I was playing with the Jackrabbit and I had him upgraded. And it was in this map specifically fighting for the middle power node. There was a sniper chilling at the very edge to make sure no infantry were able to capture it. And I had an upgraded Jackrabbit and with this Jackrabbit I actually had vision of the sniper and I ended up killing him. And I told myself, hold up, how is this jackrabbit able to see on top at a higher ground? Turns out that would that was its jackrabbit ability. And so I've used it for various different things as like, for instance, Colossus Scout, incredibly strong. I've been starting to see that in three versus three. I would like to feel like I pioneered that, but who am I kidding? I'm not big enough for people to know that. Or, it could be that I played a lot of games and people have learned that way. Anyways, there's another thing I've decided to start trying recently. Just seeing how powerful the Jackrabbit Scout, the Jackrabbit upgrade is. I've been thinking, how about leaving Jackrabbits at the very edge of someone's base? And then upgrading it so then we can go ahead and see exactly what the enemy is doing. And so, there was two games that I tried that for. I've done it for multiple games now, but there's one that has happened that I'm going to release as a non-commentary version, and then there's this one. And I don't think there's another one being released this week in regards to this specific strat. So, step one is, is to scout with your jackrabbit, right? Make sure that no one's playing incredibly aggressive. So, orange went economy first, like just an economy build. Red also Let's went roll. an economy build. Let's go. And then finally I went to go ahead and check yellow. And it looks like yellow also went economy. Now granted, I didn't check the mini bases, right? But I felt pretty safe with what I saw. Nothing spoke to me that gave me red flags, right? I'm going hero. So even if they decide to go something, I'm going to know in advance. And that's because look at the jackrabbit being placed. It's in held position at that location, so then that way I have a little bit of an idea of what is going on. Now I have my second scout coming in to go ahead and check if I can put it in a nice position for red as well so I can see what's going on. Went with the heavy metal upgrade. The, the build was actually relatively simple. And I go ahead and I put my jackrabbit in hold position at that location and I don't know if the building can see it. I haven't actually tested this individually with someone else. This was just me trying this out to see if it works. I know the one by orange is very safe. I don't know if the one by red is. So I can always try and put it on yellow next time. But anyways, the next stage is right. Now that I know that they're going to con me, I can go ahead and grab a second base. I don't feel threatened. Now we're going to go ahead and start getting ready for tech two. But before we do, we self-destruct their armory, get the supply game, and now I upgrade the scout. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, I've gone hero, and now I've also upgraded the scout. That's a lot of power being invested. But I don't need to go tech 2 yet. There's nothing here that tells me I need to go tech 2 to get a better army or get vehicles up right away. I have a hero. I can continue to scout with it with forge. Everything's going to be just fine. So I know this orange had a bunch of grunts over here at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and send my forge over. See if I can go ahead and do some damage on it. And it turns out the anvil uh, completely missed. If it was even used. Nope, it wasn't used. So if you look at the mini map, I actually have my jackrabbits upgraded now. And so... This is going to be, that's the miss. See, I remember to miss. And so this is what I mean. I can see the mini base and I can see everything that is going on on Orange's base right now. If they go tech two, but they end up building. And same thing with red. I see everything what's going on. Notice how I have not chosen to upgrade my supply depots. I'm trying to get the tech two as fast as possible. I'm, I made a lot of purchases with power. But as you can see, this hero is paying out, paying out just fine. And so now I see red. He's gone war console and he's gone raid camp. And I don't really feel threatened by what I saw because it's just a single raid camp. And orange didn't really show anything that was incredibly too scary for me too. So I saw that red started producing a lot of grunts. I'm like, okay, 
he's not going to go heavy on the hunters and orange went foundry so you know what this means upgrade if i go complete. tech two double vehicle pack or yeah factory double Black factory so then that way i can start Group double producing warhogs so from here on i am trying to go immediately to goshogs main Black reason is because upgrade i have upgraded complete. scouts i can outrange them and then on top of that, they're not going hunters. He's just making a lot of grunts. I have this viable information that's coming in. I see everything that's going on. And so I'm just continuously chipping on Orange's base. Things are looking relatively well. And see, this is with the down part. So he was able to see my scout. I'm guessing it's because the position wasn't entirely good. He was able to see a little bit of it. But the other scout is actually still doing relatively well. I at least know exactly what Orange is doing in that regards. So, Orange is still doing well, still doing damage, trying to get tech building level 2 going. So then that way I can go ahead and upgrade my, uh, start getting an air pad to get Nightingales out. But we know what Red is doing. We know when Red is coming. And we know what Orange is doing as well. So we're going to go ahead and try and take advantage to take out Orange's base as much as possible. Got reinforced with Atriox. The cleansing is going down. But we do have Brew Hammers that's starting to do work. And now that I have Warhogs being produced, they're going to start coming over as well. So I am floating a little bit more supplies than what I would like. Because I don't even have my armory yet to go ahead and upgrade my Forge Hog. But it does look like things are looking relatively good. So Scatter Bomb is going to come down very beautifully so even though he has he put in the ability to uh, siphon it doesn't really work out his friends took up a lot of damage they may be able to heal up but decide to go ahead and retreat for now i saw blue starting to retreat as well because his hero was killed so i have to get ready to start acting defensively just based off of what the situation is so it looks like late blue is going to be coming in for help and a great rain of fire is coming down. And so we got Warhogs. The rain of fire helps separate the Grunt Army and the and the Marauders that were going on. So things are looking really well for us right now. And so the goal here is just to keep just chipping away from the army. There's just a lot of Grunts. It's fine. It's nothing too crazy. Serena does her ice move. But we're getting some Rams in as well. And... The Warhogs, they're just cannon fodder. We're just here to stall with them and destroy as many grunts as possible while our Forge Hog ends up trying to do as much damage as well. But great wide move by them. Definitely could have thrown down uh, the heavy metal. But Warhog production has continued. And now I canceled it so I can go ahead and get the upgrade for Goss Hogs. Speaking of which, I have a hotkey and I still don't get into the habit of using that all the time instead of just going back to my base. I don't need to go back to my base, but some Banshees are coming in to help do some damage. Pavium is here to do with the Y move. And now they're starting to retreat. So trying to get a ram in, but the ram never actually happened. There's the ram. And Orange is now in tech 3 with vehicles. My scout was destroyed a long time ago. I have no idea when it got destroyed, but it did. But I am putting the point for Kodiaks because I am floating a lot of supplies. And so, Y move was missed. Well, actually, it somehow got me even though I was so far away. But I am starting to get ready for this drop while I continue to pressure. We now have Goss Hogs, which is looking relatively good. We're getting some Y moves coming in for the Rams. And we are going to go ahead and kill the leader, which that part is actually very nice for us. So Yellow has come in to shift over to help his team on this side, which means all the fighting is happening on this right side. But we got Goss, we got Goss Hogs, and now Forge has his Goss as well. This is our time to go ahead and do our drop, to go ahead and start pressuring. We have our scout for the extra vision, so things are just looking very spectacular for with us right now. Yellow thinks everything's okay now, so he's going to go ahead and retreat. Little does he know, I'm just going to keep on dishing out damage. So Yellow ends up coming back because he realizes... There's still a lot more pressure here than before. Adjusting elevation. Deploying. So, ready. still using my Warthog. Deal out some damage. Things are looking pretty spazzy. Got ourselves Siege going. And now I have to start my retreat a little bit just because they're starting to push with some air, which is a little bit of a problem. 
But we do have a Reaver, which does end up scaring the enemy. We're starting with our anti-air that's starting to get better. We're going to get reinforcements, even though we don't even have much going on in regards to our supply, but still. Kodiak Siege is continuing. continuing. Goss Hogs are just doing a great job, just keeping the distance. And now Blue does something magnificent, which is just to cut off the reinforcements from that side. And so... I'm able to deal with what's happening on orange and now the air is having a little bit more trouble to reinforce. And scatter bomb is coming down and this has to make yellow back away. And if they don't back away, we got heals, we got heavy metal, and this stuff is just not going to die. So instead he decides to go ahead and try it and go after my Kodiaks, which it is a move, but I do have units to help fight against this. I have Gosshog, so he is committing a lot to try and go ahead and stop this, and he wasn't even able to kill my level 1 Kodiak. And so, another good tip is have your Kodiak spread out, alright? It's good to have a deep siege line and have it all committed in one area. So, we're continuously having this pressure. Hunters are now being introduced, and Yellow had to retreat because Light Blue was actually attacking his base. We have great siege going on in general. we got the Goss Hogs out, outranging and continuously doing damage. And remember... This was all on top of a great early scout and decision just based off the information we were getting. So he did call on his drop, but this stuff is being cleared out pretty fa pretty fast. And so now Blue is going to come in to try and go in for the kill with me. I don't have much heals, but I do have my teammate with engineers, and that's going to be pretty nice. But a cleansing beam ends up going down, and I all units, and it was just incredibly awkward because... I got a lot of Blue's army killed because of that, but Reavers are still alive, but he lost everything else. But I do have another vehicle drop, and I decided to put it more on the left side than on the right side, mainly because he's reinforcing on the right side with Warhogs, so, I mean, with Wraiths, so I want to just keep this siege line as spread out and as wide as possible. I did get the Grizzly drop, so I can prepare for that once I get enough supply. And with the power that I have, I should be continually using, I mean, getting more upgrades. That's something I know I have been slacking this game in general. But the one thing I have been doing is keeping up with the pressure. Another thing, that air pad could definitely be hot keyed at the bottom, hot grouped to the up D pad. So he's trying to come in to go ahead and do a Y move, but I've got some good rams coming in to make sure that does not happen. And then I start retreating right away to make sure that he can't get that off. So... Great micro in that regards, that siphon is really a problem and for some strange reason, his leader is just not dying. No matter how much damage I end up putting, it's still a problem nevertheless. So now I finally realize, oh wow, I have a lot of power. Let me go ahead and try and upgrade some stuff. And I'm starting to get closer and closer to that nice amount to drop in the Grizzlies. And so pressure has just been continuously non-stop. We got or Kodiak continuously doing damage and we're just trying to just kill as many units as possible trying to dish out as much damage as possible and as you can see hunters are still trying to come in rates are still trying to come in and things are just looking relatively well light blue is holding off on his side of the lane so we don't have to worry about that and now I have enough for the drought, but it looks like we're going to actually end up getting the base. Cleansing Beam actually kills their leader, which is obviously pretty nice. And something that you notice is that red and orange kept streamlining in reinforcements to try and fight this fight. And because of that, they were never put into a, like, a very positive situation. They kept losing units. And that was, in my opinion, their biggest downfall for this match. And so now I got my four Kodiaks and I'm going to go ahead and break my rule about getting a deep siege line mainly because of the fact that this area is pretty small. So I go in for my drop. I still don't have much Nightingales for whatever reason. That's another thing I really slacked in. See, as soon as I say that I started making Nightingales but I'm in the middle of upgrading so that's pretty cool. Displacement does go down but I still have my Forge Hog. I still have a bunch of siege. Now I'm going to go ahead and put down a scatter bomb right on me just so that they can go ahead and back away for a little bit because I have a lot of siege that can go ahead and deal with that. I don't have enough pop to do the vehicle drop but I'm going to go ahead and call in a heavy metal so then that way we're still stalling so then the siege can go in and kill everything else. But Atriox comes in with his reinforcements and this is pretty much game. So all in all 
I think the biggest thing to take away here was that early game scout. I saw that they were going all economy, keeping the scout in a lovely position so that when I upgraded them, I was able to see everything that they were doing, which is really nice, at, at least in regards to orange and red. Light Blue was doing his fight on the left hand side, came to help me out when I was in trouble. That was beautiful camaraderie right there. And couldn't ask for another better, another good result. But I want to show this game specifically to show the, the scout game. I call them scouts, they're jackrabbits, but I think this is something that can really change things up for 3v3. I'm not a 1v1 player, so this could be viable in 1v1. The same thing for 2v2s and uh, and especially 3v3s. I think the maps are big enough where it's easy to go ahead and slide units in at certain positions to go ahead and do something about it in regards to scouting. So I went 15 for 108. Our teammate went 29 for 40. Our Atriox did and our Pavium went 14 for 23. So pretty well played match all around. Upgraded Jack Rabbits are just the best thing ever in my opinion. I think they're incredibly underrated. Utilize it. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Have a great one. Have a splendid one. And until next time, G out.